EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. All right, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for tuning in. This is a special episode where I'm going to feature a company, a Canadian success story here in the Toronto area, a company called Lime Metal. And, you know, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, you know, what about, you know, why are EVs taking so long? Why do we have to wait for deliveries and we're waiting a long time and all this kind of stuff? And part of that is the supply chain needs to ramp up for all the increase in EV sales that are going to happen this, the rest of this decade. So part of that supply chain are companies like this company called Lime Metal here, as I mentioned, outside of the Toronto a greater Toronto area. So they are a manufacturer of part of the battery supply chain elements. I'm going to go in there and talk to their CEO and get a quick tour and find out what they're all about. So thanks for tuning in. Let's get right into this episode. All right. Well, I'm here, as I mentioned, in Lime Metal, and I'm speaking to their CEO, Mr. Maciej Yashemski. Hope, did I get that right? You got it I right. I practiced Perfect. a few times because you guys know how I butcher names. Thank you very much for inviting me over and letting me uh, meet you guys. And My pleasure. Find out about all about Lime Metal, what you guys are about, and what you do. Now, for the folks watching, uh, as I said outside, I I'm really happy to, to kind of spotlight Canadian success stories, especially anything to do with the EV market space. Now, I do understand you guys have been around since 2018, but maybe you can tell me, you know, what's kind of the core mission and vision for you guys as you you know move forward in helping to accelerate this market space sure so uh, what we're about is really uh, enabling uh, you know, better cheaper cleaner batteries for uh, tomorrow's evs okay um, and the way we're doing that is by developing and commercializing uh, technologies for next generation batteries and specifically for the anodes of next generation batteries okay excellent and for those that aren't as um, engineer conscious like myself that need things kind of eased in as information. Can you describe the components of that lithium ion battery that we're used to in EVs today and where the anode plays in those components? Sure. So, so a typical lithium ion battery will be uh, you know, a mixed metal oxide cathode, a uh, separator and a graphite anode with an electrolyte in between. The mm -hmm. electrolyte allows uh, the lithium ions to, to move between the two electrodes. Um, uh, you charge the battery by moving all the lithium into the, actually sort of stuffing it into the graphite anode, okay. and then when you connect your load, uh, it discharges and the, the ions move the other way, uh, releasing electrons to actually you know, do the, the driving. Um, so if you look at the last, let's say, 30 years of battery development, most of the work has actually been done on the cathode, mm -hmm. and we've been living with the same graphite anode for those 30 years. Okay. I mean, there's been a lot of great work done to bring the cost down, to bring the performance up, but uh, we're sort of reaching the end of that road in okay. the sense that there's not much more you can squeeze out of the battery by, by making improvements on the cathode. There's a little bit more, but physically you're kind of getting to the point where mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Uh, so. When we talk about next generation batteries, what we're really talking about are uh, lithium sulfur batteries, uh, hybrid lithium metal batteries, silicon anode batteries, uh, solid state batteries. Uh, ones you, you may have heard of as, as being touted as the successor uh, yep. technologies to, mm -hmm. to the lithium ion battery. And what they generally have in common is that they get a lot of that performance improvement, a lot of the, the increased energy storage capacity by drastically increasing uh, the capacity of the anode. So this is, this is the, the, what's often referred to as the negative electrode. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's also you know, changes to the electrolyte that, that make the battery safer, but the, the big driver is really about how do you enable these high energy anode materials. And what we're about is um, not just technically enabling uh, and improving those anode materials, but also very importantly, driving down the, the cost mm -hmm. and, and allowing for, for large-scale production of these materials, as you will need for, um, for EVs. Certainly. Um, so your, can you tell us why, what makes your process different and you know, where you see um, what, what part of the market, you know, from an EV perspective, how that's going to help? Sure. So um, we're actually quite unique in that we work uh, in two 
related but relatively distinct technology areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, our company is uh, developing a process and commercializing a process for the production of metallic lithium and then transforming that metallic lithium via another process uh, into a range of anode products. So it's really you know, metal production and anode production, and it's the anode that eventually becomes uh, the component that goes into the battery, into the next generation battery. So what we're doing is uh, something quite different. Rather than trying to squeeze lithium metal down and relying on its mechanical properties, uh, what we do is we start with a substrate, which becomes the current collector in the battery. It's a component you already need in a battery. Okay. And we deposit our material onto its surface using a physical vapor deposition process. Uh, because we're using a substrate, we can go quite wide. Uh, the process is already actually very inexpensive in the sense that uh, it's adapted, it's quite, let's say, loosely adapted from the, the same process by which you would make, uh, let's say, a, a chip bag. You, know, you open a bag of chips, yep. you see it's shiny inside. Mm -hmm. That's actually a layer of aluminum that's been, uh, that's been uh, applied by, by physical vapor. Adhere to well, Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's... Okay. It's, uh, you know, you put the thing in a vacuum, mm -hmm. uh, you bring, or you put the thing in a chamber, bring the, the pressure down to a very uh, high vacuum, and that lowers the, 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 the boiling point or increases the, the evaporation rate of the material, and you can actually deposit the material right on the mm -hmm. surface. And so we're, we've basically taken that process, which already reliably produces, you know, hundreds of millions of uh, meters squared of material per year, mm -hmm. and we're taking that and we're adapting it for uh, commercial production of, uh, metallic lithium anodes. Okay. Uh, ultimately what that means is the format uh, is much more appropriate for batteries. Uh, we can customize it to you know, different thicknesses. Some chemistries want thicker uh, lithium, others want thinner lithium, and so that's, uh, that's something we can easily change. Okay. And, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because that's kind of table stakes, you know, something that looks like foil but is a lot cheaper and in a better format. That's already a winning mm -hmm. uh, set of characteristics. For sure. But what's really exciting is by the time you've gotten the material in the vacuum chamber, you've deposited your lithium, you've kind of paid for everything. Mm -hmm. And so to make incremental uh, additions, or sorry, to make relatively significant uh, additions, you know, coating other materials onto the surface, affecting the surface properties, the incremental cost of doing that is very low. So what okay. we can actually do is really significantly modify the electrochemical performance of the anode mm -hmm. at almost no incremental cost. And ultimately what that means for the, uh, for, for the consumer, for mm -hmm. the EV industry is that uh, you know, our products should be able to deliver you know, better cycle life, uh, faster charge rates, and, uh, and just overall longer battery life. So you know, that's to me always the, the goal as an engineer. I'm always right. trying to come up with a product sure. that is you know, cheaper and better at the same yeah. time. That's, I was gonna say add on, hopefully yeah, at a lower it's, cost it's hard, as it's, well. It's hard to lose when you can do cheaper and better. Right. And, and, and I think it's very important to remember, you know, this is a, a very fast growing industry. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, we're already seeing a lot of dislocation in the supply chain. You know, there's, uh, there's uh, supply shocks basically mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, as, the, as the industry ramps up, yes. there's supply cho uh, shocks in the, in the key components and the key uh, uh, materials. And uh, you know, we anticipate that something very similar will happen as we start to see next generation battery adoption ramp up towards okay. the middle and, and latter half mm -hmm. of, the, of the, the decade. And uh, that sort of speaks to the, the other half of what we're doing, which is um, we're, we're commercializing a process for the production of metallic lithium. So okay. we talked about you know, the anode, but really to make the anode, ultimately you need to get the lithium metal from somewhere. Okay. Uh, the incumbent process is, uh, uh, well, first of all, the, the incumbent industry is, isn't that big. You know, you're, you're talking about three or 4,000 tons per annum of, so obviously you know, the economics and yeah. the considerations around that are much different than sure. for, for you know, a, a mass market industry. Yeah. And so uh, that process was sort of adapted from the sodium metal production process. Uh, so, um, and so our process uh, doesn't use lithium chloride as the feedstock, it uses lithium carbonate. And uh, lithium carbonate, as, as you know, you'll, you'll likely know, is one of the, the main uh, salts. In fact, it's the most widely produced lithium salts. It's what already goes into lithium uh, ion batteries into the okay. cathode to provide mm -hmm. the, the lithium ions. Uh, and so what that allows us to do is to, to, to basically bring that lithium ion battery supply chain with us when we make the transition, that technology transition to okay. next generation batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, big plus of using lithium carbonate as the, the source material is 
when you break it down, you don't get chlorine gas. And so all of that, those concerns around uh, you know, capturing the off gas, about industrial hygiene, all of mm -hmm. those things go away. And that ultimately makes it easier to scale there. And a question that I get once in a while and that people are concerned about, and I know guys like Elon Musk and stuff have, have stated, I mean, there's, there's lots of lithium, right? There, is there a finite supply of lithium? That we see as a future. Well, there's, a, there's a finite supply of, no. of everything. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're you know we live on a ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but True. look, I, I don't think I don't think you're at the point um, where that becomes a governing uh, consideration. Okay. You know, you're going to have recycling. So as we're you yeah. as you ramp up and as you start yeah. to hit steady state, you get a much more circular. You know, yeah. much more of the material uh, can be uh, can be recycled, or much more of the demand can be supplied by. And there's a reclamation material. part to that too, as far as some of those minerals by being uh, put back into the supply chain, clean, filtered, exactly. whatever that process is, and exactly. put back. Now we're going to take a tour. Um, you're going to give me a tour of some parts of the lab and, and the back, and it'll be a little loud in there, so maybe you can tell us, first of all, uh, what, what, what you, you do here in the lab. This is the pilot, um, this is the HQ here in the GTA, and it's also your pilot facility, so where your research development is done, your testing, and then you know implementing that at a larger scale to another plant in the U.S. is my understanding, correct? And That's right. Potentially growing from there. So what what would we you know what kind of typically goes on in the lab, and then what goes on in the back? Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have two facilities, as, mm -hmm. as you said. So this is about a fourteen thousand square foot facility. Uh, it's located in Markham, so mm -hmm. just north of Toronto. Uh, and we really have sort of two streams here. The first is the, the technical team largely resides here. Mm -hmm. uh, We've got uh, now about 22 people, Great. 19 of whom are, are located here. So we have two major areas of activity here. One is the Advanced Anode Materials Lab. So this is where we develop all our, uh, let's say, follow-on products, where we do a lot of our, let's say, uh, quality uh, control type work. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime we're developing a new material, it basically starts here. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, small-scale deposition equipment, we have cycling equipment, we have the ability to you know, produce uh, uh, coin cells that we then uh, effectively evaluate you know, against baseline, figure out which materials are, okay. uh, are giving us the improvement we want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the main part of the building is actually devoted to our uh, lithium metal production demonstration line. So that's just coming online now, okay. uh, but basically this is really a, a one of uh, industrial scale unit that will produce uh, metallic lithium from our uh, VR process. So it's very exciting. You know, mm -hmm. The team's been working hard uh, mm -hmm. you know, most of the year and, and even into the, the previous year to get the facility up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're, we're getting pretty close to being able to launch that and that's going to be very exciting. We're going to do a lot of piloting oh, okay. over the last Do you the expect to launch some form of production this calendar year or, uh, uh, so or next year? It, it'll be mostly piloting yeah. and demonstration work, mm -hmm. but effectively the goal is to uh, demonstrate the process over a prolonged campaign right. by the end of the year. Okay. We're, we're very right. incremental. Uh, yeah. you know, we work with molten salts, so that those are materials that are um, uh, they're not entirely forgiving, yeah, okay. uh, and so yeah. you, you generally want to Can't really rush these. Things, yeah, right? you, you yeah. don't want to. You don't want to rush these things. So, yeah. so we do. We do a very um, uh, systematic uh, campaign, mm -hmm. and the goal is towards the end of the year, basically, to be running you know, a few weeks of uh, production through the through the cell. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and so that's you know, the majority of the building. Uh, we have another facility in in Rochester, New York, mm -hmm. and that is our uh, anode pilot production facility, okay. and it's. It's at a scale that's intermediate between like a commercial scale and a development scale. And uh, that suits us very well because we're sort of doing a bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of sample materials for uh, the major next generation battery uh, companies. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know, we produce materials, we produce uh, rolls of materials that they can then use to produce uh, cells and evaluate our materials. And that's ultimately the, the goal for us mm -hmm. is to get our products into that pipeline yes. so that when they get approved by the OEMs, it's our anodes that will be powering that, uh, nice. that EV. Nice. Um, I'm going to ask you a future question, and because you guys are publicly traded, of course, you know, any statements regarding the future need to be taken uh, you know, as estimates and all that kind of stuff. Whatever that disclaimer that we usually see, that's what I'm trying to say. But where do you see the market and yourselves by 2030? Yeah, so I think you know, the market for next generation batteries, uh, we're going to see a lot of growth mm -hmm. uh, from the middle of this decade to the end of the decade and basically accelerating thereafter. Um, it's very difficult to see how you know, future gigafactory uh, capacity will get built on a 
obsolete or near obsolete technology. So mm -hmm. I think once you start to once you start to get okay. that momentum where next generation batteries start to get adopted by uh, by automakers, you're going to start to see very few conventional lithium ion battery uh, plants getting built because again, right. cheaper and better is hard to turn down. Absolutely. Um, what what you know we're projecting and others are projecting is about you know 10 to 20 percent of the overall um, battery market being. Mm -hmm. uh, served by next generation batteries okay. by 2030, mm -hmm. which means sort of low low hundreds of mm -hmm. uh, gigawatt hours. Mm -hmm. for, for perspective, that's like the size of yeah. uh, the entire battery industry today. Yep. And then, yeah. of course, accelerating okay. thereafter. Absolutely. So, yeah. so we're, we're, very, you know, we're very excited about that. We ultimately want to be a producer of anode materials. Um, we think that there's going to be uh, you know, tremendous demand, and as the, especially in the, in the early years, as you get um, competition, uh, we want to we want to straddle that line between yeah. being a developer of new products and, and really keeping pace with the industry, mm -hmm. but also producing at volume, you know, being a reliable local supplier of these materials, especially to the North American and European uh, uh, markets. We're uh, vertically integrated because mm -hmm. we just see that there's a there will be a supply crunch for lithium metal in the latter half of the decade, okay. and we don't want to be caught up. We want to be right. able to deliver anode to our customers, and the only way we see as being able to do that is to produce that metal uh, ourselves. Um, any final thoughts for the viewers that are out there? Um, of, uh, you know, maybe some parting thoughts about this marketplace and what really to think about? Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, to, to kind of hammer the, the point home, I think supply chain is going to be key. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately uh, EV adoption hinges on that. Yes. Uh, the ability of the automakers hinges on that. And uh, the pie is going to be very big. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to see, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for companies like ours, uh, but uh, Ultimately, there's going to have to be a number of players that emerge that, that support all of, all of these industries, and, and that creates great economic, economic opportunity for Canada, you know, as a major resource uh, country, as a mm -hmm. country with, with uh, many jurisdictions with very uh, cheap energy and a, a great history of auto manufacturing. So, yes. Uh, you know, great talent pool, all great that kind talent of skills. Pool, exactly. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I think uh, I think the the future is very bright, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're excited to be a part of it. Uh, it's excellent. You know, I, I learned a lot. So, I want to thank you um, again, Mr. Uh, Mache Yast Shemsky, if I got that right again, Perfect. CEO of Lime Metal. Again, you know, lithium ion, uh, big component. The lithium, obviously, the metal side, a big component of the production, as you heard, you know, we've got to ramp up. But the future is very bright, you know, as the OEMs continue to push their production numbers up. You know, we are at this bit of a gap point right now as we play catch up, but it's exciting times. And, you know, I look forward to maybe coming back in a, in a year or so Absolutely. and seeing how things have changed and how the market's looking and whether whether you see any tangents or something like that starting to form at that point. So thank you very much for, for hosting me. Um, thank you, Ken. And ho hopefully my viewers uh, listen to something and, and understand what's going on. And again, for you guys out there, that's it for this edition. I appreciate you watching. If you're uh, following me on YouTube, please continue to subscribe. That means a lot and appreciate that. If you uh, like what I'm doing and want to support me on Patreon, you can see the link below and follow that, that information there. Keep your eyes on the EV market space because not just cars, but all kinds of stuff happening and some great success stories. So again, thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate your time as well. And until the next episode, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.